Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new playthrough here on the channel and today's one we are checking out one of my most anticipated games in recent well years really since the first one came out i've always been looking forward to seeing what they could do with this franchise and here we are frostpunk 2 released a few days ago about maybe four or five days ago now and i am very very ready to jump in and try this one out. i hope you guys are doing good um without further ado we are going to jump straight into the story we are going to go and see what's what my understanding is that this is quite different from the first frostpunk but we are of course Going into this completely blind, I've, I've deliberately not watched any streamer, any videos or anything like that. I want to go into this completely blind so that I get everything, every reaction you get, every reaction I have is completely genuine because it's the first time I've seen it. So yeah, really looking forward to this one. Hope you guys are too. Frostpunk 2 is a challenging game in which planning ahead is crucial and failure is a natural part of the experience. Well, that's good to know because that is probably what I'm going to be doing. If you're a veteran of the original Frostpunk or enjoy a challenge, you may try your luck with uh, the office officer or higher difficulty level. Otherwise, we suggest you start at citizen and take it one step at a time. Remember, it's not about how many times we fall. It's about how many times we get up. Rocky 2024. <laughs> um, right, so we're going to go into the prologue. They came upon the old machine as they always do. And when the whiteout hits, they must survive. I can't remember if this is like a direct continuation of the story from the, the original Frostpunk. It's obviously set in the same world, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. In 1887, the world froze to death. Civilization crumbled. The failing British Empire built generators to support cities evacuees. Cities that would become the last on Earth. Whether huddled by a generator or out in the open frostland, those that survived were shaped by the ordeal. 30 years later, we all became very different people. So there you go. So that first two um, paragraphs there is case, basically the first game. And here we are 30 years on in a, in a very different scenario, in a very different world, I guess you could say. Difficulty preset. Now, it did tell us we should go with Citizen if we feel like we are going to struggle. And I absolutely wouldn't... I, I wouldn't say I'm a veteran of the original game, but I obviously I've played it enough to know kind of what's going on. So, what do we think? A challenging endeavour, still with a margin for error, but otherwise demanding focus and planning. Yeah, I, I, I think that's what we're going to do. I think that's what we're going to do. Here we go. I'm excited. Can you hear us? Captain! Captain! Do you hear us? A generation ago, we fled the crumbling British We have to expand. After all, it's us who survived the end of the world.
Well, that was pretty dark, wasn't it? I mean, the first game had very sort of dark undertones to it. Horrible moral decisions, etc. So I don't imagine this one is going to be particularly difficult, or sorry, particularly different from that. Uh, so the Wanderer's Prologue. We've been roaming the frozen desert for years. Many of us do not remember a world before the Great Frost. Now another whiteout is coming, and again we've reached the old machine. Again we will rely on its furnace to provide heat through the storm. In the past, we always made sure there was enough supplies for the next whiteout, but our numbers have grown through the years. Providing for everyone is getting harder and harder. Uh, is that a train or the what's left of a of a train there? Possibly might be. It's actually kind of crazy to think that um, if if an event like this were to happen, how would humanity deal with it? How would 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 we survive? I and mean, we we're quite an enduring species. But could humanity survive something like this? I don't know. I'm not sure I'd want to, if I'm being brutally honest. The old dreadnought remains in pieces under layers of snow, but the scattered wagons still have resources inside. First, we must break ice to reach one of the oil wagons and construct an extraction district to use it. Then we can turn on the dreadnought's furnace to heat us. We will, re we will restart the furnace. Right, okay. Let's pause. just pause for a second. Let's take stock of what we're looking at. Um, so, the only real thing that I know about Frostpunk 2 over Frostpunk is that the style in which you're building the cities in the first game is sort of still here, but on a much larger, grander scale. We're building sort of districts. Kind of, I mean, is it reminiscent of Civilization VI? Can't, maybe, kind of. Obviously, we'll find out as we go. Um, but of course, we are still very much fighting the storm, fighting the cold. But I think we're just doing it on a much grander scale. So, yeah, we've got some... Um, a very bleak picture in front of us, much like the first game. Uh, what do we got up here? So our population is running steady. So we have a population of 3,000 people. Now, if you think back to the first game, for those of you that have played it, population didn't really ever get much more than 500 to 750 ish sometimes it was more than that sometimes it was less but certainly a starting population of 3,000 is very very different to the um to the first game available workforce is 1950 which is about 65 percent of the population is that, is that I'm not sure what the line through it means maybe maybe people not able to work or people that are in work so it's a combination that's available maybe that's people who are in work scraps 21 per week from population individual contributions We've got prefabs Number of shelters. Demand is 45 for all communities. We've fulfilled only 10. There's 35 communities that are unfulfilled with uh, shelter. And food is scarce. We are minus 60 at the moment. We have zero food. So let's hope there is some food in here somewhere. Right. This is the Dreadnought Wreck. And it's that's also the furnace. So this is going to be potentially the centerpiece, is it, to our uh, entire city. Total output is 10. So you get 10 shelter just from the uh, the wreck itself, but the demand is obviously is 20. Oh, that's heat, um, 20 heat demand. Obviously, it's not turned on at the moment. That's an oil wagon there. So fro uh, frost break to an oil wagon and construct an extraction dish. What does frost break to an oil wagon mean? Turn on the furnace in the dreadnought wreck to provide heat. Right, okay. So, what are we doing here? So, frost break area. Okay. What is frost breaking when it's at home? Initially, you can only build districts in a limited area. The wider terrain is covered in frozen stiff ground, which is impossible to construct upon. To widen the buildable area. Oh, right. I see. So, it's basically like... Uh, like, like almost like a construction. Like they're building like... Um, what do you call it? Foundations to allow buildings to go in. Yeah, okay, I think I sort of get what it's talking about. So it's going to cost us a, a workforce of 300, and it's going to cost us 30 scraps. So 
So how do we know one is being made? Is one being made? Extraction district. So we can't do anything with that because I think it means it's... It's not really giving us a... Uh... Okay, let me go back to this. Maybe I didn't read on far enough. You can send out frostbreaking things by clicking on the frostbreaking button located in the bottom of the screen, then find your way towards the edges of the buildable area and click on the yellow tiles until an indicator circle is full. After that, tick to confirm and start the construction or use right mouse button to cancel. Okay. So let's try that again then. So we, we click there. Ah, look. So we have to frost bake in this way in order to do that. Then we click tick. Unpause. Now what happens? Ah, oh, okay. A uh, machine just appears out of nowhere. And this is as far as we can zoom in, by the way, everybody. So they are doing the frost breaking. So I'm not actually building. I'm really confused as to where these have come from because I clearly have used some scraps here. And I've now got a third one. So did I just buy a third one? Have I clicked on that three times? Teams of workers with heavy equipment breaking us preparing ground so that the camp can be expanded, which is yeah, which is what I want. That's fine. So maybe you just do it once. Then maybe the, the, the number, the visual number of those machines is not really um, relevant. Okay, frost break twins, so we're gonna do some more frost breaking here. Oh, that, oh, that's an oil wagon there, so that's kind of okay. Do that again. Ah, right, so it costs us scraps each time we do it. How many scraps was it? 30. And now all of a sudden we have a whole bunch of them. Right, okay. I'm sort of with you. Okay. Right, so now we need to get this extraction district up and running. Demand is 20 heat, 20 materials. Output gives us prefabs, materials, and it gives us oil, and it costs 150 workforce, 70 prefabs, and 50 scraps. So the workforce, I'm assuming, while they're not working, will come back to us. So once they're finished, it'll be interesting to see if we get those back. So we're going to put that there. So we've now lost 400. So we lost 150 to the extraction district. That's fine. 300 are currently doing the frost breaking. So it's be interesting to see when that frost breaking finishes, do we get that workforce back into the pool or are they forever? No, we do. We do get them back. Okay. Interesting. Right. Well, hopefully once this is up and running. Come on. It's a shame we can't zoom in any further, I have to say. It feels like just maybe just a smidge more would be kind of cool. So that we can really kind of zoom in and see what's going on in these uh, <clears throat> in, in this city. Granted that when the city gets a lot, lot bigger, which, you know, I saw pictures in the run-up to the release of this game, the cities do look like they get quite big. I'm not... Uh, I'm aware that that would mean 
quite a quite a lot of resources from your PC wise to zoom right in on that. Right, so we're almost done. Can we speed up time? We can speed up time. Let's just move it along a little bit there. Okay. What is this? As a thick black liquid oozes through the pipes, our people rejoice. The carcass of this old machine is a testament to the hardship that made us. But more importantly, it's our haven in the storm. It has allowed us to weather many whiteouts, and it will do so again. We have oil. We can turn on the furnace. Select the dreadnought wreck to access the furnace control. Once turned on, the dreadnought's furnace will automatically co uh, convert oil into heat. Generator. On. Watch it kick into life. The furnace is on. We have enough oil to cover current needs, but the cold will still affect our people until they have proper shelter. Housing will best protect us from the cold if built in close proximity to other housing or the furnace itself. However, we'll need prefabricated parts for construction. We brought some with us. The rest we need to extract from the, uh, the wagon wreckages. We need to know whether or not in the in the previous game you saw a real change in the snow and the terrain around the generator when the when it came on it doesn't look like it's changed that much despite the obvious heat that is probably emanating from this it uh, doesn't appear to be uh, doing anything but that's fine frost break to a construction we're going to build an extraction district to provide prefab prefabs we need to get that one then Another oil wagon there. So does it tell us how much oil we've got here? 49,000 units of oil. So it's 118 weeks of extracting oil, and it's extracting 60 at a time. And our uh, uh, demand at the moment is 20, so we have an excess of... F uh, is that right? An excess of 40? Yeah. Requirement's 20. Total output. Oh, okay, so the output is 40 heat. Okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to get my head around all of this. Extraction district is giving us 20. It says that's giving us 20. The output is 60 oil. Heat from the generator, okay. So is it one heat for every three oil? Is that how it works? Hmm, okay. Right, so we'll... Uh... Build an extraction district on that thing. And then we want to build two housing districts. So does that mean we can build a housing district over here? So it's near the generator. It can be up to six. So we build a housing district there, and we'll build one this side as well once this frost breaking is done. So if housing districts are placed together, I'm assuming that is effectively them saying that because they're kind of huddled together, that the heat kind of is... Shared, I guess that's the right terminology. Probably not, but you know what I mean. So what's this button here? That's construct construction hub. That's a stockpile hub. Okay. We are currently frost breaking over there. Do we want to frost break a little bit more? Let's do that one. Let's do that as well. So it looks like we don't really have the granularity to build the cities how we want. In the previous one, yes, there was the kind of the radial build zone, if you like, where you could uh, place things within like a grid, a radial grid. This one is more like a hexagonal grid. Almost a bit, yeah, very civilization-like. 
and we can't place individual things. We're building districts, and the size of the district will dictate the amount of houses, I'm sure. So this is going to give us 15 shelter, which is still going to be too, too few. So they're going to demand 40 heat. They're getting 20 already from the nearby generator. But they want another 20, I think, is if I'm reading that correctly. Another district there. Okay, so this district is up and running. Let's have a quick look. Let's look at this. Um, mm -mm. Shelter is mainly provided by housing districts, but remember, as other types of districts, it needs heat. If the heat demand in the city is not fulfilled, cold will rise, but at a lower rate compared to a lack of shelter. Building housing districts in the right place, e.g. in proximity to each other, can reduce their heat demand. You can always disable... Yeah, that's fine. So you can always disable the tutorial part. So, total output is now 80. Why is it now all of a sudden 80? That was 40 just now. I'm very confused with, to, with how this output is, is running. Let's see if it would tell us. <clears throat> uh, 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 uh. Yes, when output equals demand, you will see a golden icon for the given resource at the top bar. When output is higher than demand, you will see a positive number. Demand is increased by the needs of the people. Yeah, that's fine. It's just the, the fact that that number's gone up sort of confuses me. We have a surplus right now. The extraction dictionary is giving us 40. No, that's the demand, sorry. And the Dreadnought's furnace is providing 80. You can find oil, yeah, okay. I'm just got more confused about the um the conversion. Am I being really fucking dumb here? I mean, it requires 40, right? That's what it's saying, and it's outputting 80 heat. But that was only... That was less than that earlier. That was like 40 or 60, wasn't it, I think? Was it just taking time to get up to speed? I don't know. I don't know. So we've lost 19 people to sickness already. Okay, so we have established some heat and shelter for our people. We must now turn our attention to the incoming whiteout. First, we must frost break the, to the small patches of fertile soil suitable for growing food. Then we must store it in easily accessible depots. We must qu move quickly so that no one starves. So where's the fertile soil then? Is it all the way down there? Is that the fertile? Fucking hell. We've got no fertile soil up here. On this side. So we've got to go... We've got to go down. So we almost don't need that. We almost don't need that one. I don't think we can stop it now, annoyingly. Okay, whatever. Keep going. Let's speed things along. Right, okay. Food district. Grows food in fertile soil, soil and prepares it for consumption. Speed things along to get that done as well. I just cannot imagine would anything grow in this weather. Squalor means that your citizens have to endure polluted air and overwhelming dirt and filth. 
Squalor raises when there are not enough materials to meet the demand for the maintenance of the city. High squalor increases disease and decreases population growth. Squalor also uh, causes recurring events that damage random districts, indicated by the districts where, when where reaches its maximum limit, the target district turns off due to malfun malfunction. Then you have to refurb it uh, with prefabs. So these are things that are coming in, are they? Or is this things that I've just got to be aware of? Growing, need for food. Yeah, we get that. Disease is, is diminishing. It's not, because we've still got 21 sick. Um, materials, scarcity. Against the elements, squalor. Each day the wind grows fiercer. Relentlessly it beats against our buildings, weakening our structures gust by gust. Without raw materials to repair the damage, our districts will deteriorate. The more we build, the more materials we will need. This is the world we know. Provide more materials to reduce squalor before it harms our people. So if I promise to gather more, my uh, relations marginally improve with us, the wanderers. I can promise to, uh, to deal with it. Build an extra... We secured our immediate survival. Now we have to stockpile as much food as we can without before the Whiteout forces us to take shelter. To do that, we need to produce more food than our current demand. So yeah, we still we've still got more more food to produce. Um Do we need a food stockpile hub? Um maybe we don't need it. Right this second. Ten percent workforce requirement goes down. Okay. All right. Um, so we again need to go and do that. And probably go this way as well. What is that? Oh, we'll get some materials over there. Right, so we're doing a lot of frost breaking, which is fine. Um, we don't have any workforce left to carry in any more work, which again is absolutely fine. So let's build ourselves a housing district down there. We are going to build a extraction one there and a another food district there. Might be too much, but we'll see how we go. Right. Finn and Kel, 42, a gardener. I'm not sure a gardener's skills are going to be particularly in demand in this particular type of world, but you never know. Uh, pouring sand in his hands. Well, I suppose he's working on growing food, so I guess maybe he can use his skills there. We've been here so many times. The soil is depleting. A couple more and there will be no point in erecting the hothouses. There will be nothing to grow food on. And the yield is so low. Either we pull emergency shifts or tighten our belts. Otherwise, there might not be enough for everyone. We might not be able to field, fill food stockpiles without exceptional measures. Consider asking the wanderers to tighten belts or instill emergency shifts in food districts. That's fine. I think we'll be okay. We've just got to get the um, these other bits and pieces off and running. We're going to have to build another housing district, I think, to get some more workforce in. Into the black. Burying the dead. We mourn those who have recently passed. As is our custom, we take them to the oil pits. We gently lower their bodies into the thick blackness. The fuel that kept us warm in life likewise preserves us in death. But death also erodes trust in our leaders. Without trust, there is no future. Okay, so have we had someone die then, have we? Oh, right, so that's like people who can't work. That's like the, the sick. So does, does each district have to be six? It looks like you don't have any choice but to uh, to, to, to do that. I 
I know we're not stockpiling food. I know, I know, I know. Try a Clegg on, 62, a seamstress. Looking at her grandchildren playing. My knees ache and my fingers are so stiff, I can't hold the needle anymore. I've lived a full life. It warms my heart to see little Betty and Jacob playing by the evening fire, but maybe this is it. I've talked with the other elders. If it comes to it, we will go. I won't let my grandchildren starve. Some people are ready to sacrifice themselves to lower the food requirement. Jesus Christ. Well, look, it won't come to that. We're building more huts for food. There we go. We are stockpiling food. There we go. So where is our relations bar? Do we have a... Um Is it down? Is it this? Overall, here we go. Overall trust accepted. Not affected by neutral wonders. Yeah, wanderers, sorry. So we can tighten the belts if we want to. Favours. We don't want to take stuff off take stuff away from them. We can actually give them some scraps back. But effectively here, relations are neutral at the moment. Marginally decreased by recent deaths. Marginally increased by promising to gather more materials. And we kept our promises as well. So, okay, we're, we're doing okay. Right, we're making we're making food. We are in the uh, in the black with that. We have enough shelter and we are make, getting gathering materials as well. If we look to build the stockpile hubs. It's a food stockpile hub. So we can build one there. Build one there. We don't have enough prefabs or scraps to uh, to carry on with that. How much do we need? 80 prefabs. How much prefabs have we got left being extracted out of this lot? Oh. Only 20. Okay, that's not uh, that's not so good. Aidan Fincham. He's an elder at 47 years old. Shocked at the sight of seals. Seals, I can't believe my eyes. We haven't seen them since before the Great Frost. How did they survive? There's enough meat there to feed everybody. We're saved. But should we slay them if the Lord spared them from the end of the world too? The seal colony can support our food production. Do we want to kill innocent seals though? That is very much the question. There's 400,000 units of uh, food there. Holy moly. We've got prefabs over there which we are going to need to go and get out. Is that prefab? Or is that just materials? That's just materials. Um, how do we make more prefrabs then once we run out? Because there's only 500 there. Right, so that has now depleted. So does that mean we should just get rid of this then? A mysterious symbol. Captain's legacy. One of our frost-breaking crew uncovered the frozen remains of a man in a tattered uniform. His shoulder patch reads, New London Scouts, 3rd Platoon. Ah! Of course, in the first game, we used to send out scouts on little missions... And they would sort of like um, give us story snippets. They'd give us information about previous colonies that tried to survive. And also they would go and capture uh, or find and, and secure extra resources for our city. Uh, he bears an obscure insignia. Some of our elders claim it belongs to a military organization, while others argue it has religious significance. Maybe you have heard of this new London before and can settle their debate. So do we want order? New London is a city of discipline that follows a strong leadership and where militant squads keep the peace. This will create a continuity in which New London has embraced the order to survive. Or we go down the faith route um, where we establish new religion, follow the guidance of a, ze a zealous clergy. This will create a continuity in which New London has embraced faith to survive. So again, back to the first game, we used to have... Um, there was two paths mainly in terms of how you wanted to run your city. You could push the faith try and you know give talks allow general just kind of hope 
to to kind of get you through and to keep everyone positive and keep everyone going or you could go down the more militant almost dictatorship style where you would basically say my way or the highway both had positives both had negatives i don't really know what we want to do here i mean i'm gonna go i'm gonna go order i'm gonna go for a more militant style with this one it's my first ever playthrough of Frostpunk 2, so I suspect there's going to be a need for some difficult choices down the uh, down the road. Obtain more prefabs by building an extracting district on a construction wagon or demolishing districts or hubs. Yes, I'm aware of what is required to do this. What's that one down? What's this one down here? That's oil, okay. I mean, we've, yeah, we've pretty much... There must be a way of, of doing um, heat demand is increased. Excellent, okay. Are we, are we gonna need more oil? So we're outputting... We're now outputting 120. Is it is it just fluctuating with demand? Total demand is thirty heat, and we are outputting one hundred and twenty right now, with sixty fuel. Is it just is it is that what it's doing? Is it's just fluctuating with the heat? I mean, we still don't have anywhere near enough. The demand is two hundred and eighty five. I think we are going to have to um, seriously think about going after another oil wagon here, I think. But I don't know. I still don't fully understand the correlation between the output of the oil and what it translates to in heat. And I don't know whether I'm the one being stupid here. So... Can we not fro oh, we can frost break some more okay <clears throat> i think we are gonna have to there's another oil one here we can go at actually let's do let's do that one uh we don't have any more districts to use for now which is annoying because we need more prefabs i mean i feel like i should go after that seal so we need more food like i don't know what else we can really do. I mean, the, the other thing as well is that it's demanding heat. Heat from a generator needs to warm the buildings. If not enough heat, they increase heat output to fulfill this demand. So, in the, in the first game, the, uh, the, the general cold feeling, let me just pause for a sec second, the general way the heat system worked was it, it kind of was all tempered around the area to which you were near either the generator or the uh, the main, sorry, a generator or the main furnace itself. Here, though, obviously the game is telling us to go out and, and go f quite a distance away from the main furnace. But obviously it's generating heat. They're obviously generating their own heat in their own ways, are they? And then they're just running off of... I don't know that. I don't understand. It's demanding forty-five heat, right? So is the is the heat system now just purely and 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 solely a supply and demand, and it is not done by the immediate vicinity to the dreadnought wreck? I think it must be. I think that's what it is. It's purely just a numbers game. It's got nothing to do with placements, location, how close you are to it, etc. I think it is purely. Uh, it is purely that. So we are going to have to go down and go and get that that oil down there to increase the the heat because the temperature is dropping pretty damn significantly. And there is that's the whiteout that's coming. Thirty people have frozen to death. That is not good. 
Our workers and frost-breaking crews have begun to suffer casualties from exposure. They are asking us to provide more heating before the cold takes a further toll. We know we need to bring in as much food as possible before the whiteout, one elder said, but we can't just let people freeze in the meantime. Another bridge to see. How many sick people have we got? We've got 25. So we got rid of, of that district there, didn't we? That one is done. We got an oil. I don't know why I was going after this oil district, wasn't I? I don't know why I built that one. All right, build that sharpish, please. The whiteout draws near a sacrifice. People in the camp are getting tense. They worry we won't gather enough food. Yeah, I'm worried about that as well. The whiteout has kind of got has crept up on me a bit here. Our hunters blame us for ignoring the seal colony and claim they would have been able to provide enough food for everyone. It's too late for that now. Many elders have volunteered to walk into the frostland rather than be burdened on our be a burden on our resources. Their sacrifice would significantly reduce the rations we need for the whiteout. What should we do? The whiteout will arrive in 34 weeks. We have currently stockpiled 9,182 food. We need 40,000. We need, we need another 30,000 units of food. No, we, are, we will not sacrifice the elders. We will not resort to such a thing. Right, can we... I mean, I'm speeding along here, but look, look how quickly that goes. Okay. Reducing another one of those. Another 17 people have registered as sick. We don't now, we now don't have enough workforce. Another oil. What have we got here? That's another food district there. What are we doing there? We're extracting materials. It's not a great deal else I can do here. So the population doesn't seem to actually be growing. It's kind of like, right, this is what you've got. This is how it's going to work. I need to. I wanted to go after that seal colony, but I don't think I'm going to have time. I think they've 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 called it correctly. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough workforce. Can we maybe pause this for the time being? Deactivate. How much, how much workforce have we got? 150. So if we were to deactivate that, we go back to 190. Right. Everybody is now warm. Though that is going to change very quickly again when we get to there. We still don't have enough. Uh, what is that? Let's turn that off. We, ne we need... To, to frost break that. And now we need a food district. ASAP. Right, we can turn... Deactivated due to requires more... All oh, right, we need more workforce. <coughs> right, now we might, now we're, sh we're bringing in a lot more food a lot, a lot quicker. And I can't... <laughs> I can't do anything with that. Oh, God. <laughs> the balancing act required here. Might have to turn off one of these food things, you know. I mean, they're outputting 45. We are... We are... F get, we're almost halfway there on that. But we need to get these materials. Why can't we just operate it at, like, less capacity? Oh, we can. There we go. Activate the district. There we go. So we're still losing out on 10, and irritatingly. Will we now get to enough enough food? We can tighten the belts. 
hunger is significantly increased, food demand is decreased. Let's do that. Let's tighten the belts. So we are now going up by 169 per day. So does that mean it's going up by seven, seven times 169? Because that's saying weeks, seven days a week. So does that mean seven times 169 is what it's going up by? The stockpile will be filled in 15 weeks. Look how much time we've got left until the whiteout. My God, this is going to be close. This is going to be incredibly close. Order emer we can we can do emergency shifts as well, can we? My people are going to be very very annoyed. How do we order emergency shifts? Do we do we do that on here? Should we do that? Let's do that on the seal district because I think we'll probably get the biggest increase. Emergency shifts. Is that all? Is that all? Food districts. I mean, they they are going to hate us for this. But now we're going to fill it in 11 weeks. So if we leave this as it is now, we will stockpile enough food. We have made seriously hard work of this, I think. I don't think... I mean, <laughs> the worrying thing is this is the very first level. This is the prologue. And we have made fairly significant hard work of this. Let's speed things along. And look, we're already in a heat deficit. I don't think there's any more... Is there any more oil around anyway? I mean, there isn't. There isn't. There's no more heat around anyway. So it's not a great deal we could... How do we... Productivity increases. But anyway, it doesn't matter. At the moment, we're just worried about, about food. Even if the temperature is about to plummet and there's a whiteout coming with it. But it is going to get warmer afterwards oh my god this is gonna be so close food secure we did it we secured enough food to survive for the incoming whiteout our workers will make some last minute preparations before the storm arrives we should try to keep our people warm for this time we will survive right turn those off Um, what's going on? No access to resource deposits. Why? Oh, it's empty. Okay, well let's let's get rid of that then. So as the as the soil the soil is just no longer. I didn't realise they had only a certain amount of food. I mean, it did sort of say, didn't it? Somebody did say that there was a a limited amount of food that we can have. Well, we need these because we need to... They are going to fucking hate me for doing this, but we don't really have a great deal of choice. The whiteout is here. The preparations are over. Minus 885? Okay, there was no absolutely no point in me doing that emergency shift on the extraction district there for the oil. It made no difference whatsoever. Against all odds, when the whiteout hit the camp, the wanderers were ready. Everyone was thankful we acted fast and gathered enough food in time. The miracle of the seal colony strengthened our hope that our journey will lead to a promised land. Our elders have added this story to our great tales, alongside warnings about a sinful city that still pumps smoke into the sky. Well, look, we could have sacrificed our elders and we could have made that a lot less painful, but we didn't. We allowed our elders to remain. We survived the end of the world. We did indeed. With our elders as well. Is that the end of the game? <laughs> now what?
That was just a little introduction, obviously, into the uh, into the actual game itself. The old captain is dead. New London is weak. Food is low. Overpopulation looms. Coal is running out. People yearn for a future worth dreaming of. But is it, is it the same future for all? Keep the city together. Or hold its hand on its deathbed. Again, not exactly the most uh, positive outlook on things. Pretty bleak, isn't it? Chapter 1. Scraping the barrel. Coal is running out. The captain is dead as he is weakened. Growing divisions brought city maintenance to a grinding halt. Now, New London is left to suffer the consequences. As steward, it is your charge to lead. But you must prove yourself. The overcrowded city is low on resources. Use this warmer year to build more shelter, secure coal, and power the generator back on. There we go. Right. I'm going to pause there. I'm going to stop this video there before we dive into this next uh, part of the game. Uh, my first impressions on the game, it is very different to the first one. Um, it, do you know what? The, the, the mechanics are... I mean, obviously, I've only played one level, so it's difficult to know because we've really not... So we've probably only scratched the surface of the game. But on the face of it, from what I've seen so far, it is significantly different to the first game. It's, does that mean it's better? I think it's actually... Well, it's too early to judge anyway. But I, it's almost to the point now where you almost need to judge them as two separate games. It's almost unfair to compare the two because they are... The building mechanics are so different. The way the heat is... Uh, calculated and, and how well you warm your city is completely different to the first game. It's yeah, even the materials. Obviously, in the in the first in the first game, you had you know the woods, you had uh, coal, you had iron ore, you had all the, the all those resources to manage and maintain, as well as your food. Um, you had a, 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 a overarching uh, or a, a bigger branching, I should say, legal politics system that was in place where you were enacting policies and laws that shaped the outcome of the the campaign mission or your your city's you know whether it lived or died whether it failed to survive a really harsh winter or whether it was managed to get through it so there, there's so much going on obviously some of those mechanics may still be in this game i'm fairly certain there is a a deeper political system in this albeit a different one again but yeah i feel like it's almost at the point where you can judge these games separately and actually comparing the two is is actually almost not possible but the first game in my opinion was close to a masterpiece i absolutely adored that game and i still do frankly i still play it from time to time um, and so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing from this one. It, as I say, it is different. It is going to be difficult in my mind, at least, to not try and draw comparisons to the first one. But so far, so good. So far, so good. I'm really keen to see how this plays out. I'm, I'm keen to see how bi big these cities become, how deep the political system goes as you try and keep various factions alive. I'm, I know there are different factions within the city. I remember reading that in the stuff uh, that was released about the game before it released. So, uh, yeah, I'm dead keen to play some more of this. I hope you guys enjoyed that first look at Frostpunk 2. Let me know what you think of this game. Have you played this? Did you enjoy the first one? How are you viewing this second one? Try and keep it spoiler-free as best you can. I don't really want to know too much about the game per se in the comments. Um, obviously, you guys can talk about it in, in loose terms and not spoil anything uh, system-wise, gameplay-wise, etc. But, yeah, I'm, I'm keen to know what you guys think um, of this game now that it's finally been released so thank you very much everyone for watching make sure you like comment and subscribe and we'll see you all in part number two